all that's possible to be saved. If you'll notice, though, too, what, are they, what is Joseph doing? Joseph is a beautiful type of Yeshua because he's not only gathering it, but he's putting it, he's saving it. That's what happens to the believers. They're saved. And they're put away. Set aside. And when the seven years is up, the harvest is over. Joseph was in Egypt during the time of great plenty. Yeshua... Turn, you know, the gospel of Yeshua turned to the Gentiles and went to all the world. And the gathering of God's elect from all the world, from every kindred, tongue, and nation, has been saved during that time. But when that seven years ended, in this case here, when the last church age comes to an end, it's over for the Gentiles. There's no more gathering, no more reaping. Now here's what's also interesting. When the seven years ended, where is Israel? They were in their homeland. The whole time while this famine is, or not famine, but while all the plenty, the, the great times are going on in Egypt, Israel is in their homeland at the time of the end. When, in other words, when the seven years was over, we find that they're in their homeland. All right? They sold out their brother. And even though they sold him out, like Joseph, remember Joseph, uh, not the Joseph in Egypt, but Joseph, the adopted father of Yeshua, as I said to you, it, it, you know, he adopted, he had to adopt Yeshua as his own son. And the adoption is greater than a natural son. So no matter what he does, he can't give him up. No matter what Israel does, Israel cannot give up the fact that Yeshua is a son of Israel. They can't give him up. And we find that when, when God is basically the seven years of plenty, when he's done dealing with the Gentiles, Israel is in her homeland. And here's what I found very interesting. Chapter 42, verse 1. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do you look one upon another? When this famine strikes, when the beginning of Daniel's 70th week begins, this is when Israel is going to recognize there is no one among them that is going to be Moshiach. And the odd thing is, Israel has been doing this ever since Yeshua HaMashiach come on the scene and the gospel turned to the Gentiles. The Jewish people, our own people, have sat there down through the years, have looked upon one another, trying to figure out which one of us is Moshiach. Mashiach, none of those Mashiachs have delivered them whatsoever. So they finally come to a place, as Jacob says, he looks at his sons and he says, why are you looking upon one another? So this is something that Israel is fixing to recognize, but they don't recognize it until it ceases with the Gentiles. And the very beginning of Daniel 70 of the week starts, and then they begin to look at each other and say, why are we looking at each other? There's no Messiah among us. It finally comes to reality to them. And then what does he say? Verse 2. And he said, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, thither and buy for us from there that we may live and not die. They recognize that there was a true 
something true, something real that was amongst the Gentiles. And they say, this is what we need. This is what we need to buy. You know, I, it, I could not help but think, and I don't think that the ten virgins have anything to do with Israel, but I could not help but think of the ten virgins when the five foolish said, give us of your all. We need to buy. And they said, go buy some for yourself. We have just enough for us. Go buy for yourself. Made me think a little different. I haven't prayerfully gone into that. I've always held that the five foolish virgins are the Christian people that did not get the Holy Ghost, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's something to that there that I'm missing. I'll have to pray about that and see how the Lord leads on that. But we could go deeper into the story of Joseph because there's so many beautiful things there, but I'll just close that for now. And... Uh, and it's amazing that we'll get deeper into the rapture um, and try to put something together. So let's bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, for your kindness and your mercy, for your love, dear God. We know, Lord, that soon there will be no time left for the Gentile people. And I only pray, dear God, that we might do everything we can to reach out to every person, to let them know the hope that is in Yeshua, that they might recognize Him at the same time, because God never deals with the Jews and Gentiles at the same time, as a group, that is. Individually, yes. There's always an individual that He'll reach out to. So we pray, O oh God, that you'll have mercy on us. Help us to be ready, Lord. Truly there is a rapture. The question just is, is when will that come? And no man knows when that will be. But we want to be ready when the day does come. We ask for your mercy and blessing. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen.